All right, what is up, ladies and gents, heel men? You just saw the, uh, the very tail end of checking replay data. It took them so long to check replay data, I had time to plug in my microphone, launch open broadcaster software. Open broadcaster software told me there were updates, so I downloaded the updates, and then uh, relaunched open broadcaster software, and then started recording, and there was still enough time after all of that shit. That it was still checking replay data of which there are no saved fucking replays. It's just the worst part. I didn't. I didn't show it. I, sh I guess I should have shown it. I can still do. It. I, I can still, if I wanted to, I could go delete the replay data, but I don't want to because it'll take. It'll take time to delete the replay data, and then when I have to re up reset uh, the replay data to make a new one once I've actually shown like what happens when you don't have replay data. Let me see if I can say replay data any more times. Um. But yeah, it took, I, I'd say it took over a minute to uh, just set up the replay data initially, which is nonsense. <coughs> but anyway, um, so basically why I am here, I didn't plan on doing this. I don't, I, you know, I've only done one video of online stuff, um, and I, I, I want to, you know, have more competitive videos and stuff going on but unfortunately I mentioned in the last video my stick was having problems it immediately I mean like before it took some time for it to happen right this time it occurred right when I plugged it in like just just so I could give some uh, background real quick to what I did between that video and this video I actually opened up both my computer and my stick I opened them both up because my computer's been the fan has been going on has been working overtime lately for some reason I don't know why but like whenever I'm uploading a video the fan is always going I don't know why it but it's just um, well actually it might be I guess it might be the drive you know spinning extra fast that would probably make more sense but either way it's very loud and it makes no sense because it never used to do that this is like within the last month kind of a thing that it, and it does I don't know why it did that so I decided let's open the stick up Let's open the computer up. Let's see if maybe, you know, dust is everywhere and, you know, maybe I need to clean it out. My computer was actually fine. There was really nothing in there. I just, I mean, nothing noticeable. Uh, my stick, however, did have a decent amount of uh, kind of like a, I guess, like a sheen of dust on one side of the, um, of the base of the, of the stick. Like, you know, when you pull it off on the bottom of that piece that you can pull off on the bottom of the stick. Uh, there was some dust, so I cleaned that out. So I just hoped, you know, like maybe maybe the dust was interfering with, uh, like, you know, something. I don't know. Obviously, did not fucking work. Did not help because I pop and you know, and I didn't see any loose wires or anything. Obviously, I looked for all that. You know, loose wires, loose, uh, loose anything, anything that might be causing issues. I looked for it. I didn't see anything. And so the moment I turned it, so just so I can give you a what happens normally when I plug this uh, stick in. It has, like I said, an LED light indicator, just like a PlayStation controller, regular controller has, where it blinks when you plug it in, and then when you hit the home button, it it puts itself to a um, to whatever controller you have. So generally, if it's the first controller you're plugging in, it's going to light up the indicator for controller one. And so when I plug this in, that's what it does. It flashes all of the buttons red when it's not actually activated yet I hit the home button and then it settles on one and then we're good to go so this time when I plugged it in the LED indicator because it's it's red for PlayStation and blue if I plug it into a 360 the blue lights activated only on controllers the indicator one and four not all of them just one and four no fucking idea what that was about and then it's and then it turned off. So I was like, oh well, shit, is this not even gonna work? And then a little bit later, it started flashing. Okay, cool. Hit the home button. Activates on one. All right. Guess it just took a little bit. Whatever. About five seconds later, it turns itself off. And then it activates again all four buttons. And as you can see from the top right display over there, I am currently on controller two. I don't have a goddamn clue what happened to controller one. I don't know. It's the same. It's the same controller. But I'm just hoping right now basically that this will stay as controller 2 like if i just have it as controller 2 there won't be any issues because when it's on controller 1 there have been all kinds of issues sometimes the stick will just turn itself off 
and just stop working completely. Sometimes it'll do the aforementioned thing where again, it just deactivates, reactivates, is saying I need to be set as a controller, and then you hit the home button and it activates itself as controller two instead of controller one. So I'm hoping, because I've never seen anything happen after this, I'm hoping if I just keep it on controller two, it might stay as it is because otherwise, you know, if, these, if this stick thing is becoming a continual issue, obviously I'm not going to be able to play PS3 games anymore when there's always a chance of the stick going haywire and fucking me up. But I do have, uh, I haven't even touched it yet actually, it's just sitting on my cupboard. Uh, I've had a the 360 version of Persona 4 Arena. I got it, I guess, I don't even know, I can't believe I got it, because I didn't try to get it, I didn't like, you know, plan it ahead to make sure I had an extra slot for when the game came out, but I managed to get Persona 4 Arena Ultimax on the 360, so if worse comes to worse, I do have that, it's just, it, it is unfortunate because it doesn't have the lobby system, and the lobby system in this game actually seems pretty solid, because apparently, uh, the, the, uh, the developers of Arc System Works said, like, point blank, it caused the lo the lobby system we created for Blaze Blue caused network issues. I'm assuming because they've cut down the size dramatically of each available lobby, that that was that was the problem. That w it was um, there were just too many people, too many diverse connections, all thrown into one place, and it caused issues. And now I don't know. I mean, I have pl I've played a few matches in there, and I have not had any kind of lag issues whatsoever. I played two and three bar people. And they've all been great, so I don't know. Hopefully they fix that, but it does suck because that uh, feature does not exist on the um, uh, 360 version. Now, this is probably, I can't say 100%, but this is probably the only time you will ever see me play score attack mode. And the reasoning behind that is the simple fact that this isn't, like, I mean... Unlimited Mars was its own level of bullshit. It was pretty silly, uh, you know, the button reading to do invincible moves, blah 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 blah, whatever. But it was a it was a lower level of bullshit. This game is Unlimited Mars. If every character in Unlimited Mars had twice the damage output, basically. Like, let me just. I actually, I don't think I've shown you guys this. I'll go one second. Who has the most health in this game? I'd assume Kanji. I can't imagine Kanji does not have the most health out of all the characters in the game. Welcome to the Velvet Room. This place exists between picture and your boss mode on. As well as your alter ego. It's actually not a very good your color, persona. but whatever. I'll crush the life out of you. I wish you good luck. So let me just show you how stupid boss mode is. Like because at least with Unlimited Mars, they have a bunch of different effects. Uh, moves, some moves have different properties. Um, they have some new moves entirely. Not this. Like, in this game, I don't even know what the fuck Ken... Like, I know two things that are different with Ken. Aside from his redonkulous damage output. But you'll see the redonkulous... I actually like that color for Goromaru. Oh, okay. Well, shit. You see that though? Like, look, that got up to 8701. That wasn't even my full B and B combo when it got up to 8701. So let me try. Oh shit! See, so 5160 for that. Oh shit! Unfortunately, you can't. I don't know why they made it this way, but you can't. Uh, as far as I'm aware, you can't go into training mode. So like, I can't just go do it in training mode and show you guys because that would be simple and not stupid but I mean you can see right there my fucked up B and B where I didn't even get half the moves damn it supposed to dash first wait why can't I what is what is huh did my wait a minute hold on hold on oh yep yep that's um so i am not holding de as you oh it's it's deactivated okay so we, we online like what is what is charging the skill shit does that just happen if you're idle 
I mean, I would hope that would happen when it's idle and there's not some version of the A button, but yeah, as you, uh, nothing, nothing. So give me a second, let me go. <laughs> oh, and now that, now, now we're just, now we're just, let me see if holding down the home button actually doesn't, no, no, okay. I'm just, I'm just triggering up a, uh, oh, is the battery dead? Oh, Jesus, man, I got nothing good going on. Come on, man. All right, now I got to find, hang on. Hang on here, is this it? No, it's the PS4 one, shit. The fuck, found it. Yo, this is the most unprofessional moment in my career as a YouTuber. This is just terrible. All right, there we go. Okay, so yeah, the, now this, now the regular pl uh, PlayStation controller just activated as one. So that's we need to activate it as two. So here we go. So I mean, I don't, I don't even know what the button layout is for this. So obviously, let's just go <laughs> roll over to the main menu. So there's, there's, there's my point. There's my point as it is. <laughs> uh, my stick is done. It's clearly gotta be like now that I've seen that. I didn't know really what it was before, but like right there when I tried to unplug it and plug it back in it kept alternating every single time I press the home button it would never trick it would never activate to whatever it was and it would continually cycle between the blue LED lights and the red LED lights so that's clearly a problem with whatever handles the uh, dual modded system that's very uh, it's very obvious that that has to be it so that thing's just not working anymore it's broken apparently so uh <laughs> I get, like, the worst thing about that is that, like, it's not a big thing for me, because I can still play Street Fighter. <coughs> I can still play Street Fighter, I can still play Persona, even though I won't have the lobby system. Uh, I can still play Marvel, I can still, everything but Blaze Blue. but apparently with Blaze Blue, like, I'm done, because I can't. There is no way in hell <coughs> I am going to bother getting proficient with a pad to play, like, damn it, man, why... Why is the stupid, is the stupid, is the stupid, let me go to, let me just go to smile.amazon.com, telling you guys right now, if you use Amazon at all, I mean, I can't imagine anybody would know that anybody that uses uh, amazon.com would not be aware of what smile.amazon.com is, because they basically, like, they've been pushing it themselves, which is good for them. But uh, if you are somehow not aware of what smile.amazon.com is, it's basically it allows you to pick a charity of your choosing. You pick whatever charity you want, and a po I don't know how much it is. I know nothing about the numbers, but a portion of everything you buy, uh, they kick a little bit of that money over to whatever charity you picked. And so, if you are not aware of that and you do use Amazon.com, for sure do that because it's basically. They're not charging you more money at all for it, um, and it's far and away. I mean, you know, you're just you're buying regular shit, and part of that goes to charity. What's not to fucking love about that? So anyway, Persona 4 Arena Fight Stick. That is a fucked up layout. Oh, it's because it doesn't have anything there. It's just. It just shows me Persona 4 Arena and then Persona 4 Arena Ultimax. It doesn't actually show me. Oops. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing. There's no results for that. Let's go to Google. I mean, it sucks. Uh, they said, basically, there's no official release date yet for... Um, There's no official release date, and, uh, and there's there's nothing here. There's literally nothing here. I could get a Hori stick, but it's only for the PS3, and it's two hundred twenty-seven dollars. 
<laughs> what a deal! They've actually made show Minazuki t-shirts and hoodies, really? So that's just what I want to do is walk around with that character on my chest. <laughs> so yeah, uh, but like I said, they don't even have, just going to the Mad Cat store, they don't even have the, um, the PS3 slash PS4 tournament edition up for sale yet. As far as I know, it's just a pre-order. Yeah. It's just a pre-order right now. And they don't even have a listing for the Persona 4 Arena stick. So, like... <sighs> I mean, I really do want that stick. I like the artwork. Uh, I like the stick. And I would like to show support for that. Although, it's not promising that it's the uh, Tournament Edition 2. Actually, no, it's not. Yeah, it is a Tournament Edition 2. The Ultra Street Fighter 4 Tournament Edition 2 stick is listed as $200. That, I mean, I don't know if it's going to stay like that or whether or not they'll be like, you know. Uh, anyway, but yeah, $200, that's that's a bit much. That's kind of steep. Let's go check out ADARC. Because ADARC is the one I had. I mean, hey, that lasted me for, well, shit. That only lasted me for really about two years, right? It's not really that promising, to be honest. <laughs> I mean, maybe at this point I should just get like a cheap PS3. No, I don't want to get a cheap, like that's that's all. There's always that like that thought, you know, like eh, I could get this cheap stick, and then oh no, but there, shit. Those are all out of stock. Wow, all out of stock. All out of stock. Oh, that's just a bag for the stick. All out of stock. Okay, so apparently ADARC isn't even selling sticks anymore, apparently. Because every single listing they have is out of stock. So... Cool? Yo, what the hell? So, like, really, does ADARC just not do sticks anymore? Maybe I should just contact them and be like, Yo, my stick's fucked up, fix it. <laughs> But that's kind of... What the fuck? So I don't even know what the hell I would even do. We're checking Amazon again for a Hori Arcade stick. How much is this? The Hori PlayStation 3 Real Arcade Pro. But that's $140. Oh, you get that Real Arcade Pro V4. Haya Boost. Oh. Oh. Hang on a minute. Oh, never mind. Oh, no. I released on October 22nd. They have, apparently the Hori has a PS3 and PS4 stick on, mm, and it releases like, I mean this is something obviously I just need to put some thought into, because I don't want to just, you know like, hey I'm on a video, let's purchase an arcade stick while I'm recording, but yeah that's, but that's certainly a lot better than $190, and Hori sticks are good, I, I still have my Hori stick somewhere. I just stopped using it because I had the Chun Li stick, and I gotta get—I gotta give it up, man. You gotta give it up to that Chun Li artwork. I love that stick. That's the only reason I don't use the Hori anymore. I mean, the real reason I stopped using the Hori stick in the first place was just because I got the dual modded stick, and so um, there was no reason anymore. I think I might. Yeah, I'm gonna. I mean, the first thing I'm gonna try to do is just contact Adark. And see if they'll do something about it. But like I said, I bought that stick years ago. If there was any kind of... It'll ba it'd basically be something about like... Yo man, we want to give this dude quality customer service. And see if he puts the word out. That we have that customer service. But the, again, it's kind of... It's a little concerning that they don't even have any... Every Like I said, every single arcade stick on their website was uh, said is out of stock. So that's not very promising in regard to how they're working out not lately. Uh, but that's, I mean, you know, it's 12 days before that's the uh, Hori stick even comes out in the first place. But that's definitely something to consider right now. Because, I mean, like I said, if I'm going to get a stick, it's going to be, it has to be, uh, it has to work for the PS4. So for Guilty Gear. Like, there's no reason. I'm not gonna just buy a PS3 stick to have a PS3 stick. That's pointless and stupid and it'd just be a waste of money eventually. 
whereas buying a PS3 and PS PS4 stick will work for me in the future. So it wouldn't be wouldn't be a complete waste of money. So I'll have to look into that. But anyway, so let's just finish the thought on the boss mode. Okay, it's just the reason why score attack isn't appealing. Now it, they have technically made it easier to get through because you can continue. There, there's no. Uh, it is, there's no game over it's just if you lose you can continue blah 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 but the reason it's just so it's the same feature as unlimited Mars where it's less about actual like skill and ability and more just learning how to abuse AI which is not it's not enjoyable at all it's not fun uh, it's just you know you're basically you're basically finding a way to m let the AI treat it like a training mode dummy rather than so basically like what's the point of even being there when you're not i'm wasting effort instead of like learning good neutral learning good setups i'm learning how to abuse ai and that's not going to help me anywhere it's useless to me um so i don't know uh but i'm gonna i'm pro it's very unlikely that i'm gonna bother playing score attack mode plus you have to um in order to win anything do i have to actually pick a character here Welcome I don't know what character it'll be on, but... Because as you can see, I got... I played... I played on the easy version just for shits and giggles. Just to see if you unlocked anything for beating it. You didn't unlock anything for beating it. You have to beat all four courses as risky on Risky to unlock anything. It, it, you, don't you, you don't just have to beat one and then you unlock something. And then you can play the rest if you enjoy it. You have to beat every single one of these in order to unlock the navigator uh yeah the navigator for the character and like i actually looked at the dlc and all the dlc prices when i downloaded uh adachi on the 360 and uh i think there i think it's 11.99 to unlock all the navigators there's no way i'm going to pay that to unlock the navigators i couldn't care less about that about having all those voices but if the option was to either beat all four of spend my time beating all four of these which will easily take me over an hour or spend an hour's pay to unlock every single navigator voice not just one every single one you are damn sure gonna believe that I will I would rather just spend that hour's pay and call it a day I will never bother beating all four of these it's just it's pointless and like I said it would be it, it would not be as bad were it not for the fact that they're just terribly boringly balanced whereas just you know like with Ken the only changes I am aware of and you actually if you go back and look if you weren't paying attention one of them is that that persona hit after his 236a slash B that now triggers that like paralysis lightning effect and shit another one apparently is that uh, Meteorama I think it heals more or maybe I think I don't know it heals there's something better buffed about that other than that, I literally... Oh, Koromaru has no recovery on his moves, I think. No, no, no. Koromaru has infinite health. Koromaru can't be hurt. That's what it is. And other... I don't think he has anything else other than that. Like, there's no changes to anything else that he's got. It's just that. And then he does three times the damage that he would normally do. So, and that's how... That's how score attack is. It's like... I mean, that's how the boss mode characters are. They just do stupid damage on top of like one or two effects that are pretty much irrelevant anyway like it doesn't add anything to their game it doesn't really do anything for them it just i mean obviously well that's kind of bullshit because obviously koromaru not being able to be hit is a pretty big fucking boost to him but ultimately it's generally just like an additional effect on a move like the persona follow-up and that's it like what the, who gives a shit whatever i don't care and so that's just not enjoyable. It's not like, oh, this is almost a different character. Like, this is this is this character if every single one of their moves was broken. It's just not... This character's damage is completely irreparably broken. And they will kill you if they touch you. And it's just silly as hell. It's just stupid. And it's not fun to bother playing against that. So, uh, now that I have done this, now that I have done of two straight videos where I basically just shit on Persona 4 Arena which you know don't take that too much to heart is definitely not a bad game it's not that I hate it it's just score attack mode is stupid and terrible uh but everything else is like it's fine it's just they made they 
made it from the get-go as a simple fighting game that a somebody that had only was only interested in RPGs could get into and have fun with. And so when you start out early, you know, just this is gonna be a simple game. It's gonna end up simple. It's just they made it too simple. And that led to, you know, basically everybody having ridiculously good pressure. <laughs> Because, you know, like, if somebody's just, you know, hitting buttons and getting punished for everything, they're not going to have fun and they're going to quit. And so I guess that was kind of the mentality behind it. It was like, give everybody amazing buttons. And then, you know, you'll just have to guess whether or not to roll or DP to get out of those amazing buttons. I don't know. Uh, but it is a, it's still a fun game. And it's especially enjoyable if you can actually find a character. So let me just go to character select again. Let me just show you, out of all of these characters, how many characters I have, like, just kind of bullshitted yeah. around with to try and test. This homie. Uh, this homie. 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 Don't care about him. Okay, so that's basically it. Everybody that I wanted to play is over on this side of the screen, but that's... That was what? Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven characters, including Ken. Obviously, I didn't add Ken in there. But that's seven characters out of a cast of, what is that, 18? No, that's not 18. Stupid. Learn how to count. That's 22. <laughs> I hit I hit the eight, and then I was like, okay, there's three more. Nine? Uh, so, yeah, a cast of 22 characters, and there's seven of them that I'm just kind of like, you know, oh, you know, I could kind of fuck around with them. But the problem is, I know very damn well that Mitsuru is going to be boring as shit. She's just a boring character. Teddy'd probably be fun, but I don't think he's really, I don't think his playstyle in general, which is basically like super footsie based and, you know, kind of just throw around items. Not really my style. I think I'd have fun with him. I really do. And I also think he's actually a far better character than him. We'll see. We'll see how it ends up. Uh, we'll see what the future holds for those characters, but I really do. I think he's better, like, he's a better week one gimmicky character, and he's a better character overall but we'll see if i'm right on that yosuke i know i'd have fun with but that requires practice and we all know what i feel about practice <laughs> especially for a game i'm not like 100 percent interested in in the first place akihiko is again kind of the same thing i'd have more fun with him than mitsuru but he's still kind of a dull character in general it's you know you're kind of just doing the same stuff and waiting until you know one of those things works you're just cycling between options and hoping, you know, one of them ends up working. Same thing with Labrys. Like, Labrys is... I'd say Labrys, out of all of them, I probably have the most fun with. Just because she has that, holy shit, what the fuck, oh god, I've been hit, oh god, I've been hit, help me, help me, help me, factor. Which I love. Like, I love characters like that, where it's just like, you just don't want to get hit by them. Whereas with Ken, like, I don't give a shit about getting hit by him, but if I get put into block stun by him, I'm going to be crying. Non-stop. Um, but yeah, I just, I don't know, man. All the it's just because of the simplicity of the game, it leads to a lot of boring characters that, like, you know, because they don't have very many options, uh, there's just not much wiggle room to kind of, like, create your own game, basically. Which is what I like, you know, one of, Darios, actually, is it Darlos? It's Darlos. Darlos 9D asked me, you know, like, I, I, I can't get, like, what is your play style? I don't really, I mean, like, what kind of, what brings you to a character? There really is nothing in general that, like, draws me to a character in terms of, like, what their capabilities are. It's what their options are. How diverse is this character? Like, as much as I will shit on Tager for being a terrible character and, like, his options generally suck, he still has a ton of options, and that makes him fun, because you can play those mind games. You have a bunch of stuff to play around with. Even if they're not the best tools in the world, he's still got a diverse group of them. Same thing with Asriel. You can do whatever you want. Asriel has everything. You can do anything with that character. And he's also hella fun to boot. Like, he's just fun to watch, to me. Uh, Valiant Charge and Hortnik Chaser combos are awesome to me. I love those. Uh, so he just has fun effects. He's just a fun character. Whereas with Ken, he's a very strong character. He's got extremely strong pressure. Uh, almost unbeatable pressure, really. Fantastic neutral. He's a great character, and I have a feeling that he could be a top five character in the game. But I will not play him because he's boring. <laughs> he's a flowchart character. And that's what a lot of characters in this game are, just because they have limited options. You can easily define a flowchart that you really can't expand outward from. 
The only characters that really can, I guess, you, Yosuke, like, that's really it. And everybody else just kind of has, like, a generally defined game plan that you can't deviate from. And so it's very... I don't really like that. I don't like that aspect of it. Which is why I'm drawn to Yosuke, is because I know, like, at any point in time, I can do, like, five different mix-ups. That's appealing to me. Not, whereas with Ken, where it's like, I'm not really doing mix-up at all. I am just putting you in block stun and frustrating you until you make a mistake and I capitalize off that mistake. That's not as fun. That's that's not enjoyable for me. So that's kind of what I look... I mean, you know, it's the A aesthetics that draw me to a character in the first place. Like, Marie would not... Well, for instance, Platinum. Let's go with Platinum, because I started to use Platinum in CS2. A aesthetically, Platinum is a character that I would never, ever approach. Wouldn't even bother with. That character's ridiculous. The voices are ridiculous. The effects are ridiculous. But you know what? She actually has a really fun, she actually has a really enjoyable gameplay. And so that's what, you know, I just kind of fucked around in training mode and it was like, oh, this is actually kind of fun. I kind of like the item aspect and, you know, all the various effects you can get and stuff. This is actually kind of a fun character. Let me try this out. And I actually really enjoyed playing Platinum. Whereas, like, actually watching Platinum, I'm just kind of like, this character is the dumbest fucking thing in the universe. But I liked playing as her. And... So aesthetics is something that will draw me to a character initially, but it's their gameplay and how fun it is and how diverse it is that'll keep me around. Like with Ken, the only thing that brought me to Ken was the fact that he used a spear and that he had Koromaru. That was it. I didn't know anything about his gameplay. And now that I do know far more about his gameplay, I know that he's not really the character for me. And that's the same thing with him. He's a very good character. He's a very solid character. Has amazing damage output good pressure, good mix-up options, but, or actually, I'm sorry, not good mix-up options, though. He's just, he's got, like, two or three things you can do, and that's about it, other than just pressure you with incredible normals. That's really it. That's all he's got. And so, it's just stuff like that, where it's, it's kind of like, I feel like I'm playing, like, a 66% completed fighting game character. Like, okay, you created a neutral, you created the pressure, now where's the mix-up? <laughs> like, that's kind of how it is, how I feel about with a lot of the characters in this game. And the, a lot of the characters in this game just don't have that mix-up level. So, I have now rambled on long enough now that we have seen live that my stick is fucked and done. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I gotta go look into my options now, but from now on, I'm gonna have to be playing the, uh, the 360 version of it, because now I don't have a stick anymore. Alright, peace.